Hi everyone, my name is Siamak and uh, this is ACIGS webinar series, uh, International uh, Geosynthetic Society IGS and we are here in Australia, um, in Australasian chapter. So this webinar is our first September webinar. We have another webinar coming up on uh, 22nd of September. So this month we have two. Um, as you know, IGS um, is a global society. We have 45 or more than 45 chapters all around the world, uh, more than 4,000 individual members and student members, and uh, basically in almost um, 70 countries around the world. And um, ASIC is Australasian chapter. Um, we cover Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Pacific Islands. So the Global Society website is uh, www.geosyntheticsociety.org. Um, that is when you become a, a member through the chapter, uh, you can basically access the International Geosynthetics Society website and all the technical resources, um, all of the uh, technical committees, um, all about IGS, you can access um, those information through the website uh, with your membership. Um, ACIGS.org is our chapter website. Uh, I encourage you to visit our website. Uh, there are lots of resources um, available on the website, uh, especially um, the, a, a good library of all of the videos um, we've um, recorded. Uh, from the lectures that uh, ASICS had in different events and also all of the recordings of the webinar series. Um, so you see I've circled that uh, 2020 ASICS election form. So that has been closed uh, basically Monday this week. The nomination closed. So we will soon start the um, voting process, uh, hopefully from next week. And um, so we're just doing the logistics now. Uh, make sure you um, cast your votes and, um, and um, participate participate in the uh, ASIC selection for the next term, which is 2021-2022. We have been celebrating uh, since last month, the webinar series anniversary. So we started August, 2019, and uh, we have been doing a webinar a month. Uh, some months we have had two, similar to this September, which we have two webinars. So very successful and very popular in our region. Uh, our webinar series and you can ac actually access, as, as I mentioned, uh, you can access all of the recordings from our website. Also, the other announcement from last month was uh, ASICS uh, being in the top five chapters uh, of the entire IGS world. So congratulations to all of our um, members and uh, committee members specifically for their efforts that uh, has put us in the top five chapters of the IGS uh, society. Um, at the end of this webinar, you can um, request to receive a certificate of attendance uh, through us. You just need to email us and uh, we can provide the certificate of attendance for this particular webinar and also in the future, any ASICS events that you attend, uh, we definitely can provide this certificate um, when you request it through us. Now about today's webinar, um, so we have Concrete Mats, Australian Concrete Mats as our sponsors. So we thank uh, Australian Concrete Mats for their sponsorship. Uh, it's uh, going to be a very interesting um, presentation today uh, by Richard. So the topic, as you know, is innovation, innovative erosion control system, flexible concrete uh, geosynthetic uh, technology. So Richard Moll is going to be presenting this uh, webinar today. A little bit of background about Richard. Um, so he is one of the directors of the and owners of the Australian Concrete Mass and Australian Concrete Posts. Richard and his business partner Alan Theron are both hands-on in development and manufacture of concrete products at their factory in northern New South Wales, south of Ballina. Uh, they offer simple engineered solution for issues that arise from Australia's harsh environment condition and their concrete, uh, with their concrete products. Concrete erosion mat is just one aspect of their concrete solution business. Since 2015, uh, they have been supplying their concrete products to New South Wales and Queensland roads and maritime departments, uh, regional council authorities, many civil projects and thousands of landowners 
and developers across Australia. In their background, both Alan and Richard come with a wealth of experience in construction, earth moving, rural and logistic uh, businesses. So thank you. And before I hand over to um, Richard, um, so this is, as I mentioned, uh, one of the many solutions that can be um, um, basically used for erosion control. So as you know, there are um, different types of erosion control approaches and basically um, erosion control mats with uh, concrete mats is one of those um, uh, solutions. So um, it's going to be a very interesting presentation. Uh, I stopped sharing from my end, uh, Richard, and I hand over to you to start your presentation. Thanks. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'll just uh, get, get going. Um, okay. All right, so um, let's see, get going. Okay, so let me just go back one. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a presentation, a um, bit of an outline of what I'm doing today. So a bit about who we are, um, a bit about the flexible concrete erosion mats, the, the components that make up that mats. Um, I found quite a bit of history about where the mats actually come from. Um, in the past, there's actually a bit of history on about that. Um, I'll go a bit more into the um, properties of the geogrid, um, not as much in the concrete as we were talking about the uh, GeoGrid Society here, so not really into the concrete part of it, but I'll, there's some um, benefits of how that actually works with the GeoGrids. And then we offer, um, from our, my experience in Australia, using different um, geotextiles and underlays under the mats and how they benefit. And then I can show you some case studies of how um, the results we've had from doing that. So um, I'll start the presentation. So, like Sima mentioned before, we're based on northern New South Wales, so really on near the Byron Bay, which is about the most easterly point in Australia. We luckily to be geographically halfway between um, Cairns and all the way down to Tasmania. So we supply the whole eastern seaboard all the way across to Western Australia. Um, so we've got a wide range. We have to be in a very good spot, nice part of the world, nice relaxed and uh, um, conducive to good business where we are. So I also have a company, so my company, I have a couple of companies, um, keep myself busy because uh, I've got nothing else to do in life, I just keep myself busy. Um, one of them, one of my companies is manufacturing the concrete erosion mats. Um, I also do a big business doing uh, uh, pre-stressed concrete fence posts for the rural sector. So that helps with the concrete mats being able to distribute it throughout the country. Um, so a bit about where I'm going to with this presentation. So we're talking more about how the erosion mat helps um, with our environment we're in. And I came across, you know, the um, IGS definition for erosion um, itself is a natural process caused by the force of water and wind and how it's influenced by a number of factors such as the soil, vegetation, landscape, and can be accelerated by various activities that occur like storms, drought, or different environment factors. Um, the uncontrolled erosion process can also cause major damage to existing structures and the environment. I mean, you can just see by the picture of the drain there of what, what a little storm can do. So the components of the erosion map, there's really three things that go into uh, making the erosion mat and they're very similar in what's made overseas as well. There's other companies that make erosion mats in the USA, um, the flexible mats. So it's really the concrete shapes which add weight and offer a hard armour to the surface of the product. Um, you've got the geogrid which is really the most integral part of the whole thing that interlocks all the, the concrete shapes together and, and keeps them secure. And then we also use the geosynthetic textiles underneath it and that can be used um, for different applications and what you want and in our application we use a non-woven underlay or a nutritional underlay and we found that's helped for the Australian environment being the best for the Australian environment. Historically um, I came up found these pictures they've been making articulated blocks or 
into um, cable blocks uh, for quite a while now. Um, this is a picture of pre-World War One. This is actually the where they did for the landing of Normandy. They made these pre-stressed, I mean not pre-stressed, these um, concrete blocks and they tied together them, tie them together with cable. They were actually shipped to the landing site for the Normandy landing to offer hard surface for the tanks to actually land and board. You can see the pictures of 1943, the tanks on 1944, and still today in in the areas where they put it down, you still can see um, those cable blocks today. Now the US Army did similar things in the 1930s. They've been lining the um, Mississippi River. Um, the US Army Corps have been doing that. And they still, to this day, use more cables than anything else. Um, so that's where this technology sort of started from using um, flexible matting. Um, then the products as, as the geosynthetic technology uh, progressed, um, you got people like in America who developed the whole process even further using embedding concrete into the um, uh, geosynthetic grid, um, geo grid. Um, and that was specifically done like, um, by a man called Jan Johansson and Matt Motts. Um, uh, Matt, Matt started Fleximat. And then there's other companies in the USA called Sureflex, which also make a very similar hard armor protection. Um, we've been doing this in Australia. So we, we, the US have their um, environment um, issues there and, and which aren't very similar. In a lot of ways, the, the products appear similar, but there's actually quite uh, differences in between the two, com the way we do it in the US compared to the way in Australia is. So just some examples of Fleximat and Sureflex are their projects overseas. Um, you can see the grass growing through it. It easily goes around structures. So those are just examples of what they've been doing overseas. So what really is a flexible concrete erosion mat? What does it actually involve? So it's really these concrete shapes. I know they look uneven, but they are uh, rectangular and they embed into your polyester geo grid. And underneath that, we put the geotextile underlay. And one of the benefits of these concrete mats is they are flexible. And um, the most important thing is that because of the shape of the, the concrete blobs on their day, I don't think they look very even there, but they, are, they do have structure to them. Um, it offers the space between, um, allows the vegetation to grow through. So I'll just talk about individual components that we make up with the geo grid, how they go together and um, the, how they actually work in synergy together and how we actually get uh, a product that's very conducive to the Australian environment. So the IGS definition again is geogrids are geosynthetic materials that have an open geogrid appearance. They woven geogrids are preferred for a range of soil re reinforcement applications, including slopes, retaining walls and reinforcements of soils. So that's where we're coming from that. So what we did is, so from that, we, we actually use the geogrid as a base to connect the concrete shapes together. And we actually embed the concrete into that by about 15 mil. So the geogrid is actually an integral part of the concrete shape. And that's what's given us the structure. So the geogrids, um, in the US, they've been using off the shelf um, polypropylene geogrid. In Australia, we found due to the harsh environments, um, it was actually, we're getting better results for UV protection and um, life expense expectancy by changing it to a polyester woven geogrid. And the, although the, the um, apertures are very similar, we all use a 40 by 40 aperture. Um, we found in Australia, we, if we increase the kilonewton, um, high, the longitudinal transverse uh, strength to 50 kilonewton as opposed to 35 in the US, we, um, we're getting better results for uh, flow rates um, through water flow rates. We also increase the PVC coating and the most important for Australia, the UV treatment.
Um, that's more primarily due to the harsh environment of the sun in Australia. Okay, we manufactured uh, the poly, um, the polyester woven geogrids are manufactured from high modules, which are high strength and long polyester fibers. Where fibers are warp knitted and bundled together and and then they're coated with PVC. Um, one of the benefits of what we do, we, we also increase the high junction node strength. So in ordering uh, GeoGrid, you can specify uh, the node strengths and um, it's one of the most important things. Um, the benefit of GeoGrids offer extreme high tensile strength with low elongation. Um, means they don't stretch very well. They're often the aperture confines soil to gravel, which increases shear strength of the material. We also have resistance to corrosion, chemical and biological, in, and they're both chemically and biologically inert. Um, like I said, excellent creep resistance. Again, the, the polyester woven geogrid we use is high UV resistance. It's flexible and durable, and it's safe safe to install, you know, um, as opposed to using cable, the cable blocks. Um, so with um, with shear, with the, the splinters from the cables, if they shear. Um, the geogrid is also very cost effective. Um, unlike steel mesh, polymer geogrids do not damage rock crushes well, when you come to disposal. So being disposal is an important part of uh, aspect of what we looked at. Um, if you need to remodify things and uh, reshape streams or embankments or whatever they actually being applied applied to, um, so other applications are used for in um, mining, roads, pavements, earthworks, and fundamental foundations in in roads. Um, I'm getting tongue tied here. Uh, <laughs> Um, the polyester geogrid, so one of the important things we want to do is um, we end up getting a lot of our product um, tested independently. So we approached TRI Australia. They verified all our tensile strengths and um, elongations, and they also did uh, UV resistance for us um, of the product. So again, another important part of the um, certification and given the customers, I suppose, um, some reassurance of what our product is. We actually took the US product, we knew what their data is because they've published it, so you can find it on the internet. And then we then got it verified through Australian um, hydraulic engineers. And presently actually, I actually have stuff being um, retested again at the University of New South Wales Hydraulics uh, Laboratory and um, just to get some test results. So the physical properties of the concrete, so the second part of the physical the properties are we use a 40 MPA concrete. In the USA they use a 32 MPA concrete. We've thought the same thing due to our harsh environments we increase the concrete strength to a, um, a higher strength. And one of the things when we first were developing this, um, we we thought, oh, this would be fantastic for the domestic market. We'll make them all nice and smooth. And, um, you know, we'll be able to sell more for residential buildings and things like that. But as soon as we went to the hydraulics engineer, the first thing he told me was, you need to make them rough. And then I started questioning why, and he explained the reason. So one of the important, important things we found about the texture of the surface is, can be seen here. So this is actually um, the facilities of the University of New South Wales. This is actually a test they conduct in at the moment um, in their water laboratory lab. It's actually still underway to today. So they're actually testing geosynthetic grass surface. And you can see from a side section of this, where the water's coming from the top, the water's flowing through, and the geosynthetic grass is underneath. So as you'd understand, the geosynthetic grass isn't extremely um, um, rough. 
it hasn't got extreme rough surface, but it does offer some resistance. But as the water, you can see from this close up slide, so the top, you can see the top left hand side, the water's flowing in. And as it's moving down over the surface of the geosynthetic grass, you can see it picks up momentum and the, the um, water turbulence in the water actually starts to aerate the water. And that is actually, which, which you can see on the slide to the right. So that's what we're actually trying to do and uh, maximize in the um, concrete by keeping them um, as rough as possible is to, um, encourage the uh, water to be aerated and the consequence of that also helps with reducing scouring to the underside of the mats. So, so the, the third component of the, the, the flexible concrete mat that we do is the uh, geotextile underlay material. Um, again, the IGS definition is the geotextiles are continuous sheets of woven, non-woven, knitted or stitch bonded fibers or yarns. Um, the sheets are flexible and permeable and generally have an appearance of a fabric. Geotextiles are for separating infiltrating damage, uh, filtration damage, reinforcement, erosion control applications. So this works perfectly in with what we're doing and we found with the Australian environment, there's generally two different applications what people are trying to do. Um, firstly, we found that um, with the applications, really, there's people either trying to uh, revegetate areas that are being um, eroded or they're actually trying to uh, protect areas from erosion. So I know that they go hand in hand. Um, so what we found is the one nutrition, the nutritional geo mat that we actually use as an underlay actually promotes vegetation growth. And then we also use a non-woven geosynthetic cloth, which also helps bind the soils down, offers more of a resistance to the soils underneath the mat. Um, and, and in many cases, there's flexibility to do whatever really the engineer wants or would like to specify underneath the, um, the product um, specifically for their project, you know. Um, one of the things we did, we, we searched around for a nutritional uh, geomat that had properties that, um, that were biodegradable. And we found um, some from a company called Geosynthetics Australia. Their products are made from um, high strength polypropylene fibers. Uh, they're needle punched and they're embedded with wool and fibers. So it had a high tear resistance. Um, it also featured excellent drainage and, and it provided an ideal medium for seed generation. So one of the big things we wanted to actually be able to grow the grass through the, the um, flexible concrete mats. And part of that was to help anchor it down and at the same time also allowing the um, grass to vegetation and revegetate. So um, part of it, so with the vegetation grow, it also helps protect the soil um, and the vegetation underneath it. Um, when we laid um, over prepared soils, and when it was laid over prepared soils, it also um, helped bind the soil to prevent erosion. So um, it, it, the nutrition mat is actually quite a, quite important one of the products that we actually make and distribute. Um, so the, what we found, what happens with using the, the two together, the concrete actually helped maintain the moisture in the soil. It uh, prevented from, especially from the wind erosion and the harsh environment by using the nutrition mat in conjunction with the um, concrete, it uh, maintained more soil in the uh, moisture in the soil, which also then encouraged vegetation growth. So the small openings promote seed generation while the wooden plant fibers reduce moisture loss. Um, 
the, the mat also inhibits weed growth during the vegetation. And um, the, one of the benefits is uh, the wool helps aerate the substrate and retains water. So um, at the same time, the wool also decomposes and slowly releases uh, nutrients back into the soil. Um, there, there is specific table on what those actually nutrients are and the result is a strong healthy vegetation without the need for additional fertilization for up to six months uh, when it actually starts breaking down. So th this is the from the manufacturer what actually nutrients are actually available in the uh, nutritional uh, massing that we supply. And the applications, really we're using these in areas exposed to high wind and high rainfall. Um, we're using it more for stabilization and on banks and slope protection. Uh, we've been using a mine rehabilitation sites, anywhere there's a need to establish vegetation. Um, and it's ideal by a biodegradable alternative due to core matting. Um, so that's the nutritional map of what we've been using. So in in other applications where we we probably suppose want to um, uh, where there's high flow water and things like that, we we tend to use more the non-woven underlay, um, and the non-woven is a continuous filament geotextile. It's a hundred percent polyester fibers as opposed to the um, nutritional map. Um, it's mechanically bonded by needle punching. Uh, there's a strong resistance to acid environments, uh, delivers high flow through rates, and it's excellent drainage performance. Um, so a normal non-woven also accommodates soil irreg irregularities. Um, and when we put in the mat out, it also rolls out uh, very easy over rocks and stones or with lots of roots. So it doesn't punch very easy. Um, and this, this is probably more in other using other applications over the top of it, but it, it, it helps with our benefit as well. Um, uh, it's also abrasive resistant, especially um, ideally under the concrete mats. Um, and the benefit also is it offers high UV resistance, the non-woven underlay. So we, in the different applications we've used it, um, it's, it's, it's been very economical to use. The, the uh, continuous filament structure permits water to pass through while also preventing soil migration. And this has been the, probably the most important thing for, for lining streams or drains. Um, and I'll show you some examples of where, that, where we actually use that. Um, you have improved drainage, ideal for draining or ventilation soils. Um, also used for, can be used for liner protection. So the underlay is free, is free, ideal for protecting liners from punctures, like I mentioned before, and the reinforcing applications. So the strength of the non-woven cont continuous fibre geotextiles can improve the load bearing capacity of soil structures. And this is helps in conjunction using the hard armour of the concrete itself. Um, both, like I said, both of them work hand in hand. And probably the most important thing about that is actually more is how you anchor in the product down becomes a, a major issue in high flow air water areas. So um, that, that's something I'll address a little bit later. So with the, with the three components, like I mentioned before, you've got the concrete, the geogrid and the um, underlay geotextiles. It's what actually makes up the flexible concrete erosion mat that we manufacture. Um, it's um, for ease of handling, we found a standard width of 2.4 meters uh, is ideal. Um, when we manufacture it, we can we manufacture it up to over 200 lineal meters, 300 lineal meters long. And then what we do, we actually custom cut that to lengths. And we found up to 15 meters, it weighs about 1.6 ton and or 45 kilograms per square meter. And we found that's the, being the most, um, effective size to to maximum size i should say to actually sell to customers 
um, and roll it up and strap it um, for transport reasons as well. Um, we can custom make them to any length people want. Um, frequently, you might get some in, in projects that will be from people order varying lengths depending on how their, their project goes together. So a bit, a bit about um, the project case studies that we've done. Um, so the one I'm going to show you first up is an uh, orchard. It's a macadamia nut orchard and their main issue is having the topsoil in the centre of the orchard. So all the, the rows of, were, of water were directed through the central channel and um, in this application we used the concrete mat and we used nutritional underlay and you'll see pretty sh what happens. So picture left shows um, after they just re, re, re um, graded it so you get some of the soil back to the center where of the orchard. He still couldn't get his grass to grow back due to the water flow rates. So remember this is in northern New South Wales so we do have quite a lot of rain in northern New South Wales. Um, this is the finished uh, installation on this project to the right. So the way the mats come, they're pretty quick and easy to install. Literally unroll the, um, the, the start of it. We find using excavator is the easiest way to actually unroll the mat. Um, they can start driving on this straight, uh, straight away. So once you actually shape the ground, the, the concrete mat will just conform directly to that and you can just drive over the mat with the excavator and start unrolling it. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's continuation going through. So after six weeks, we found this is what it looked like after six weeks. You can see the seed, the vegetation was, um, the grass seed was actually put underneath the nutritional mat. And you can see on the left-hand side and the right-hand side where the mat went. Um, compare that to where the, um, the grass is growing in the middle. You can see it's a lot more vibrant and has uh, that's one of the benefits of the nutritional map creating that. Literally a day after that we had a massive storm in northern New South Wales. This is around about January 2020 and the water flow you can see is laid down the grass uh, where the water's been redirected um, and the long having the long grass also helps with uh, anchoring the product down and the benefit of the using the mats is you can just you can mow straight over the top of it. So this is uh, late in the year, the farmer's been able to just drive down with his normal tractor. He doesn't need any specific machinery to actually dry out, to ride over it and mow it. Um, second case study we did is in Mossvale, New, uh, New South Wales. This application, they had a drain and um, they used the non-woven underlay and um, this way they, they I'll, I'll show you a bit later, they actually hydro mulched over the top of it to get the product going. So before, in this instant, these are next to the soccer fields at Mossvale and they had major water issues of um, the railway line, there was a railway line to the right and they can't get rid of the water, it's all being redirected back to the soccer grounds. So the council uh, dug a, a drain which is about 400 linear meters long. So they made the drain six meters wide. So in this application, we did, uh, you can see a few things, um, how they actually apply the non-woven product as opposed to the uh, um, nutritional mat. First of all, where the joins, where the mats join, we put actually some additional geogrid this helps with the anchoring of the geogrid where the two mats meet. So this drain effectively was um, uh, 7.2 metres wide. Um, so it had three mats, 2.4 metres wide, each line next to each other longitudinally. And where the longitudinal join is, we actually use a geogrid, um, additional geogrid to help anchor the, and join the product together. In this application, there's quite a high flow of water rate. You can see the picture to the right. So same thing. Um, this is a day after they finished the project. You already had, they had a massive storm. The water started flowing down and you can see the water uh, sitting in the, um, 
in the bottom of the the drain and working straight away. So they they approached this. They wanted that the non the um, non woven underlay more as a protection to also encourage un, so the water couldn't get underneath and scour out underneath the the concrete erosion mats. Um, same thing. This application, they um, they place um, the topsoil on top of it. We encourage that. It also helps with promotional growth. Also helps with the UV stabilization of the geo grid. So it doesn't matter what you do um, with the Australian harsh environment. The more you can cover up the geo grid from the UV, um, the longer design life you'll get out of the product. So this is the, the same project. This is literally taken uh, last week. And the, the, um, you can see they've actually hydro mulched over the top of the geo grid in this, this instant. So generally not many people hydro mulch, but the council um, found it more economical for them to do in this situation um, due to the large areas that they're trying to cover. And it's just different progress of where the soil's grown, the vegetation's grown through the product. Um, in the bottom of this, you can see it's full of moss. This is actually nearly stays permanently moist now um, due to the flow. Um, you can see the railway in the top left hand side, there's a railway on and where the water is being directed through. Okay. Um, second project, we've got a bridge abutment. Um, same thing in this case it was a little bit different application normally what we do is we actually remove all the excess concrete and in this application to me and said look he wants to actually stick the geo geo um, geo fabric to the concrete um, though because of the situation they're actually trying to encourage um, increased um, uh, sort of what I'm saying in tongue tied here myself now. What they're trying to do in this station, they're trying to um, minimize the amount of vegetation growth through the, through the mat due to the bridge. Oh, I need a drink of water. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll quickly go through. Same thing. Um, this is a test sample. We did a um, test sample probably about four years ago. Uh, picture on the left is just on a farm drain. We, in this instant, we used uh, the uh, non-woven underlay, and you can, even with that, you still can see the vegetation growing through the product and uh, helping anchor the product down. Um, when we replace this, we use the, nu the nutrition mat rather than the non-woven product, and this is even promoted the growth even more. And as you can see, the mats can cut around any items you need. Um, back to anchoring, one of the most important things is anchoring the product down. We find that's a major aspect of what we need to do. And um, we use um, U-bar anchors or trenching in the product. Um, same thing, Dingo Beach, another aspect, uh, use it as a temporary boat ramp. Um, same thing, lay down over the existing soil, the sand, this was using a non-woven product. They uh, put the um, sand directly onto the um, over the covering, and this this project literally took three hours, and they were already driving down onto the boat ramp before it even finished. The, the The fishermen were eager to get out on the boat and start using it, and this has taken a couple of weeks later with the continuous tide coming back back and forwards. So the benefit of the concrete mats are, are really, it's quick and easy to install. There's minimal site preparation, no on-site assemblies, and it supports natural filtration and maintenance. So um, the one part of the whole thing is being able to revegetate, and this is encouraged, is helped with having the um, open spaces around the concrete shapes and allowing the grass to grow through it while at the same time offering a hard armour protection. Um, here's some flexibility of where the, where the product's been used. These are actually from um, products made by a US company. 
Um, as you can see, it can go on steep slopes as well. Um, they're quite well anchored. Um, and they easily conform to around pipes and drains. So there's quite a lot of versatility in the product of what you can actually do with it. Um, same thing. Um, and one of the most important things about this, by having that space around the mats, it offers a permeability of a hard stand surface. So you can actually drive over it. The, um, the, the sediment is also reduced by having the excess vegetation grow through. And this all comes down to the, um, the geotextiles and the geogrid material used underneath the product, which helps promote vegetation growth. Um, there's just some applications showing you where we've done it, some swale drains, drainage channels, um, culverts and inlets, um, runoff drains, um, hard stand surface access ways. See, so it's the same thing here, is access rope on a farm. They've used as riverbank protection. So it has numerous applications um, where the product can be used. You can see in the USA, they used more of a jute mat underneath their product. Um, that's conducive to their environment, what they want. Um, um, so that's a bit more about we really where my flexible concrete mats are. And similar things are, we also use geosynthetic textiles um, or more in our articulated blocks. So this is another part of a product we make. And as you can see on the left, we use, um, uh, K, uh, you can either use cable or nylon ropes. And at the same time, they all promote uh, vegetation growth through it and promoting having the underlay of geotextile underneath it and offering a hard armor. So this is a different application using a stronger product than uh, the flexible concrete mats. So really at the end of the day, we've got the three components working together. You've got the concrete, which is offering hard armor protection and the weight. Uh, you've got the geogrid really, which is holding the whole lot thing together. And then we've got the uh, geo, geo, um, geosynthetic underlay, which is either helping vegetation growth or helping prevent the soil erosion or combination of both um, all at the same time. So all around, we're offering a significant cost savings for um, in material costs, labor, fast delivery of projects. And the benefits of this whole thing is to the environment and easy maintenance for the client. So, cause they can uh, just have, they, they can mow over the product. And it's a practical, simple solution to solve erosion issues. And it's an easy to use, cost effective erosion product that is flexible, permeable and offers reliable and long-term erosion protection and prevention. All right, how you going CMAC? You got any questions there? I've been waffling on for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, Richard. Very, very interesting. Uh, as you were presenting, I was receiving some positive uh, comments. Uh, the, the presentation and the uh, solution you are providing. So I have a few questions from the audience. Uh, yep. I, I might categorize them in two or three categories, then I, then I don't have to ask every single yep. those questions. So one major one is um, comparing this solution with the other erosion control solution. As yep. I said at the beginning before you started, so we know that there are several approaches or um, solutions to uh, erosion control. Uh, yep. um, and TRMs are one of that, uh, one of those like juice maps you showed, you know. Yep. Um, many different ap uh, applica uh, approaches. So how do you compare your uh, uh, solution, the flexible concrete mat, against uh, the other approach like TRMs or uh, jute mats? Or in cost-wise or in things like well, that you mean? Yeah, both cost and, because uh, you mentioned it's, it's more cost-effective and labor. Yep. And okay, so and one of the, 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 probably the most, one of the biggest benefits are is, is the mat starts working straight away. So as soon as you put it down, it starts working straight away. So cost-effective wise, it's about $40 per square meter 
um, um, so when you get on site, you, effectively it's picked up, put in place where you're going to unroll it. So I assume prior to that you've prepared your soils. I do have lots of videos on how to actually do that as well. So it's effectively just picking it up, removing the cutting the straps, which are used for lifting and holding together, and effectively flicking it with the excavator bucket. So we find to actually unroll a mat that's 15 meters long will take about three minutes to do. So it doesn't actually take long to unroll the mat itself um, in position. Um, then you just need to anchor it down with some U-bar anchors and effectively the whole thing starts working straight away. So that's one of the benefits of that is the labor component on the um, installation is really reduced compared to some of the other, other products. Okay, good. Um, and again, uh, our webinars have um, a combination of Australian audience and overseas audience. Yep. So I have received um, uh, some questions from other parts of the world. Yep. Uh, the one that I think is probably uh, just just next door is New Zealand. So is, is yep. it available there or any 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 of our uh, neighbour countries in that region? Yeah, 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 yeah. We there's a couple of options we're looking at. So we can uh, ship ship overseas. It's pretty easy, as you say. The the product is easily uh, packaged, and we can package in any size as we want. It's made to be two point four meters wide, so that can fit in a shipping container. That's one of the benefits of having the size that we actually do. Um, we have had a lot of interest in New Zealand, and at the moment we have. Um, um, a factory being looking at having a factory being set up there at this point in time. So that is one of the aspects we are looking at in doing in that product. So it's one of the people think that it, it appears an easy process to make. Um, there's actually quite a lot involved. Anyone can make small pieces of the mats up to 2.4 meters long. Um, but when you start making in bulk, that's when it becomes a major issue. And, and that's, that's when the, manufacturing costs become um, for machinery become larger you know that's right very good um, also a few of the audience have asked about the because uh, you showed the flume test uh, equipment in yep. uh, uh, the university equipment yep so the question is about the velocity of flow uh, do you have a number of maximum flow um, velocity on this material at um, Literally, I'm about two weeks away from giving you exact velocity, uh, velocity on that. Um, at the moment, it, we, it's got stated about 5.9 um, meters per second. We actually think it's going to be a lot greater than that. So that's, that's using the data from uh, Fleximat in the USA and extrapolating it with what we've got here. We actually know the velocity in Australia. The, the problem isn't the concrete separating from the geogrid that um, we've overcome that by using a, a 40 MPA, structural 40 MPA concrete. So that concrete actually is the same concrete I used to make my pre-stressed concrete posts, which I use uh, rammers to ram them into the ground. So, and the same concrete they used to make bridges and the same concrete they used to make railway sleepers. So we know we don't have an issue with the concrete. The geogrid that they use in the USA where the data was coming, coming from, they use a 35 kilonewton geogrid with a 40 mil aperture. We've increased that to a 50 kilonewton geogrid with a 40 mil aperture. So we find we we know the the velocities can be a lot greater. It, the main issue comes in anchoring the product down, and that's with any product you use really with getting the velocities underneath it. So we, we're confident in the the product self handling high velocity flows which which i'll be able to give you literally in about two weeks anyone wants to know it'll be on my web page as well and um we think anchoring the anchoring the product down is more of an issue people should be concerned about than than the velocity of the flow of water on top of it yep. hopefully that answers your question yeah uh we, we have to wait for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah two sorry it'll be on my web page in two weeks yes perfect yeah, yeah you, you, i'm glad you mentioned your website because i actually found a quite a, a lot of interesting uh, information about this uh, this solution 
on your website, concretemats.com.au. And I think uh, Thank you. there are lots of cool videos as well. Uh, we couldn't show the videos on this um, yeah. webinar, but um, um, I encourage um, people to actually check them out. Thank you. Maybe one last question um, uh, about dispersive soils. So where you have, like, do you need a particular standard for the subgrade to put your product on it? Um, is there a specification that the subgrade needs to meet? Um, if the material is, as this question is asking, um, uh, if the material is dispersive, um, yep. how does that work? So the, we've been we come across this issue in the Darling Downs in southeast Queensland. So they have really dispersive soils there and and, and um, really reactive soils. Again, it, it's not necessarily the failure of my product. It's actually it would be the failure of of preventing the water getting underneath the product and scouring underneath it. And the other issue is actually making, ensuring that the product's anchored down properly into the thing. And that's just effectively making the, the leading edge dug deep enough um, in a trench to um, stop the water getting underneath it. And, and, in, and in dressing that, we can place different, if it's an issue for an engineer, then we just place different underlays underneath it. So we just come up with a the geotextile that they want to place. Um, maybe it could be a combination. I, I don't need to just put one underlay in, I can put a combination of, well, we have unlimited number, two, three, four, five underlays underneath it. So put place in the underlay is uh, something we can do in the manufacturing process. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Yep, no, that, that's good. Um, and you showed two, just towards the end of your presentation, you also showed those uh, articulated blocks, yep. uh, the cable blocks. Yeah. Uh, when do you use those and when do you use the normal um, G-grid? Um, um, okay, so, so the uh, cable blocks are probably being used more for um, underwater, for sea applications underwater. Um, we've been using them for anchoring down uh, cable lines across, say, the harbour or across bridges, I mean, uh, uh, bays, probably trying to uh, cover up telecommunication lines. Um, we've also used them around in the Gladstone uh, Harbour um, at the base of their new um, um, armour walls. They've, they've used them there as well. Um, and probably more for high flow um, dam spillway. I mean, there's a lot more massive concrete involved in that. So um, the normal articulated blocks are 150. 50, 50 mil by 160, those articulated blocks are 400 mil by 400 mil by 120 mil deep, and they held together with cables. So there's a, a larger different mass in the concrete involved in that. So, but they, but they can work very similar. I mean, it just comes down to how big their budget is really, paying for the concrete. That is great. All right. Um, thanks, Richard. Uh, I have uh, a few other questions uh, from the audience, but we don't have time to go through um, those questions. What I'll do, I'll just email them through to you. And if you can Thank you very much, Simon. respond to those questions, uh, we can send them back to the people who asked those questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all of the participants in this webinar today. Oh, I think it was a very uh, informative and um, very interesting presentation. Uh, Richard, thanks a lot again. And um, no, thanks. we catch you in our next webinar, 22nd of September. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting presentation again. Uh, the, the topics and presenters and all the details are on our website. Please, please uh, visit the website, register for the next one, 22nd of September. And we see you then. Thank you. Thank you.